Hello everyone, Eric here, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. So in the past you may have seen videos or my video of using something like a $20 USB dongle to pull in stations on your laptop. And you can use this to see all across the band and listen to stations. Okay, and what do you do with that? Well, you receive. Right. Yeah, I'm starting to lose you here, Rob. I'm not really copying you that well. Luke. You can see uh, signal strength. I'm just not hearing you you that can see well, the freaking, you know, uh, all kinds you. of stuff. But you can't transmit on it. So what a lot of people do is they go and they buy an SDR radio. That way they have all this with a transmitter. Okay. Now I have some settings here that are screwed up in this software, uh, but anyways, you get the idea. Now, how do you get 100 watts? on an output using something like this for a receiver. So I have my radio tuned to the same frequency. And what I can do is use the MFJ 1708 SDR switch box. Transmit and receive for SDR. And I'm going to show you how I hooked it up and what it does to give you this kind of SDR with a full 100 watt radio that you already have and couple of them together without buying an SDR radio. Let's check it out. Now let me show you how this uh, is designed. The MFJ1708 SDR. It's an SDR transmit receive switch. So as I showed you here as an example of the USB RTL SDR dongle, which is a popular unit for 20 bucks, but originally I think this was designed for something a little bit better like the SDR Play, but there is a link to this in the description if you want to buy it through Amazon for the same one. It throws me a few cents for buying it, so that'll help me out. So giving you the ability to have an SDR display with something like this using the same antenna as your HF radio. So your HF antenna would go here, your HF radio would go here, and your SDR receiver would go here. And through the magic of 12 volts, a PTT line, and MFJ, it automatically switches your receive to transmit without having to damage your SDR. It grounds out this SDR port, you know, grounds out the front end of your receiver so that you don't damage it because you may have a 1,000 watt amplifier here, and this thing's on a desk, and it's just going to overload the front end. So as a, a safety thing to keep your SDR alive, it grounds this out and sends all the RF from the radio into the antenna with a delay so that if you're, uh, you know, that way it doesn't accidentally switch over to SDR uh, port here for receive while you're transmitting and destroy that. Now it does require power. It does come with a 12 volt DC cord that you have to use, all right? And the PTT line, so this is coming from your radio uh, as like an amplifier keyer circuit, and it's going to ground out the circuit and switch the relay inside. As a fail-safe, it does have RF sensing inside. So if the PTT line is lost, it'll automatically keep it in transmit mode without going back to SDR using RF sensing. Now, I don't have this cable uh, I don't have this cable for my radio. I need like a, a eight pin from the tuner jack on the ASU to a RCA for a king. But your radio may have that PTT, and that's doing the same thing as the amplifier. It's grounding the circuit and turning the amp on. Or if you're using a PTT switch, but you have to use that to make sure. But there is a backup fail safe in there with the RF sensing, okay? And um, with the power also. So this is a convenient way to if you were to use something like this to share the same antenna with your 100 watts. Because, you know, a lot of times you're buying an SDR radio. Let's say you buy one that's maybe like a, uh, an ELAD. Um, ELAD is an Italian uh, software-defined radio company. You're not getting 100 watts out of that. Now you got to use your SDR with an amp, you know, and a lot of them are QRP-style radios. So let's say you have a perfectly good Yaesu or Kenwood or Icom, and you want to utilize that because you know that radio. You're a knobs and buttons kind of guy. You don't want to go to a mouse click to go SDR just for a receiver. I mean, yeah, SDRs have a good transmit as well. But maybe you just want a pan adapter or a scope and to see what's going on. Utilize something like this 
with a dongle and away you go. All right. So let me show you again how I connected this just so you are aware of what this is doing. And, um, you know, go from there. It's a damn good thing my wife is not allowed to come in my room. This desk is a mess. All right. So first off, you have your, this is my little jumper for my SDR here. Okay, that's going on the SDR. Very simple, right? Then I have my antenna. Gray one here. It's going to go like that. Then I have my HF radio. It goes here. And my power. All right, and when you plug power in, it does turn the relay on inside. So if you don't have power in here, uh, you know, the relay is set to, uh, well, right now it's set to receive. So if you don't have power in there, it's going to set the relay to transmit, so it might be acting quirky. So make sure you have power in that. And it's not drawing a lot of power. So if you wanted to take this portable with a, a battery, with your QRP rig or whatever, you can do that. It's not requiring much power at all. And then your PTT line here, okay? And uh, I'll plug in the laptop. All right, so there you have it. I have all my stuff here. I have uh, some FT8 going, or listening to FT8 on 14074, seeing the signals. And don't pay attention up here. I, I, I screwed some settings up, and I got to redo all the settings. I don't know what I did. But, uh, all right, and then my radio in the back is set to the same frequency. So I can now use... My computer, this is FT8. I mean, really, I would probably use Digital Master, but if I was on, say, uh, CW, I could look on here, see where the action is, find a contact, click on it, find the frequency, and then set my radio to that frequency, and away I go, right there. And then if there's somebody causing QRM, I could click on the waterfall and see exactly where that is next to it and find that frequency on my radio. So that is the MFJ1708 SDR. Also check out Johnny uh, Signal Search K5ACL. He did a video on this also. And uh, he shows a different setup than this. So I encourage you to check his video out and learn more about it. 73, link is in the description. More videos on the way. From KJ4YZI. Look at the look at the radar or whatever that's going. See it moving? <laughs> Pretty cool, I can see that on the scope. I think that's uh, over the horizon radar. Look at that. You can see it moving all the way across. It's something cool. I've, I always wondered what that whoop was. And then uh, once I see an entire band five megahertz wide, I can see it crawling all the way up as they scan. Pretty cool.